Your business is in sync with LiveSync. This webinar is powered by LiveSync Accounting and Zero Accounting Software. Introducing Attorney Dexter Destajo. We will cover creating the bills, creating the PO, making payments partial and full, creating credit notes, edit, delete, and void credit notes, bills, and payments. We can also repeat the bills when especially when you're doing an accrual or also a provisioning you can do that you can attach same as with sales and then you can also send supplier remittance to start with the bills you can do with your purchase overview dashboard so in your purchase overview dashboard here if this is almost exactly looks like how the sales dashboard is right so it's the same luckily the process of doing bills is also the same as what we are doing in sales we can create draft we can submit for approval we can submit for payment we can track overview we can search the same thing here we can also do a shortcut bill here we can also create bills repeating bills credit notes also from there we have a separate uh, dashboard for our PO as well now, what I wanted to do now is jump directly to creating a bill. I can do it. I can do it from here, or I can do it from here. Okay, so it's up to you. So I create a fresh bill now, and let's start creating a bill. So sample supplier. Okay, the date is today. This is the due date, and then what you would want to input here would be the supplier invoice number. Right? Because you would receive a bill. So let's say you receive a bill of 3D154. You can attach a copy of that scan copy. Okay. And again, if the bill is in this currency or a Philippine peso, it's really dependent on whether you have a multi currency or a single currency system a subscription. You can add currency if it's still not added. Then I would say, because I'm a digital marketing company, maybe I would create. I would be paying a cost for my Facebook ads. What's with, with Facebook is charging me. So let's say for that month, I was charged by Facebook um, ads. Okay. Cost. Let's say I was charged for, let's say 400 pesos. I would select the particular account now. Now, in, in this case, the Facebook ads should be recorded as direct cost of advertising I don't have that account yet so what I would do is to create that expense account from here actually what I would do is select a direct direct cost type and then this is 70725 uh, I hope that's available okay and then I would say direct ads cost. okay that's the account I will do because that is a um, direct cost of service for my for my sales and then I would want to watch that in my dashboard but I would not enable that because I'm not paying from this account then Facebook is let's say Facebook is what we know is from the US so normal they don't give us a, 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 a VAT invoice right so we cannot claim input for that so either you select no VAT but assuming Facebook, again, assuming Facebook is in the Philippines and is issuing a VAT invoice to us, then we can select this one. So in our example, I'll just do that and it create, uh, we are receiving a, a VAT input from Facebook. Again, I select that this is a branch one cost and then it's a department cost. Okay. Now, instead of saving, I would just go directly to approving it. So this time, it will be posted in our accounts payable and in our expense directly. So let me run our accounts payable now. So your accounts payable is here. Let's look at your prof profit and loss. I refresh that. So I have now the profit and loss here. Let me see my sales tax also. 
So now my sales tax has triggered a component of this item. Right? So what is my due now? My due is 10,752. So that's my tax uh, VAT due to the VAR. And then I did not told you, there's actually an audit report of the transactions that we created for a particular VAT. So here it tracks what are the invoices that we have created for VAT output and then what is an in input. So if you get audited for your VAT by the VIR, you'd be able to run this report and saying, this is how it matched to your VAT return. Okay, so you follow this, you copy this when you're filing a VAT return. So your VAT input, you put the, the input this amount and then you put the output on this amount as well. Let's see your balance sheet. So your balance sheet now would always be updated with an accounts payable plus your sales tax is also updated here. Now, the next step is would be paying this bill. 400, I'll pay this bill. Now, let's say I'll have another example here that would add to our discussion. What I would want to do is to add a chart of account of PT Cash. So I want to pay the Facebook by PT Cash. Maybe I withdraw from my PT Cash, ask someone to use to pay it from their personal account, whatever. But for our example, let's use a PT Cash. But we don't have a PT Cash account yet, right? So I will create a PT Cash account, okay, by creating a new tab without closing my balance sheet account. It creates a new tab for me. And then I create a bank type and then I use PT Cash here or whatever is your cash fund. And this is what we advise if your PT Cash and cash fund, you can use it here. Okay, so I'll just copy this. And then code is 102 and then account type would be others and then I leave that because there is no code and then RPT cash basically is PH currency. So now I have a PH currency now. Then I can pay this bill now. I just update the screen, make the payment. Today, now I see PT cash now and then I would say PT cash voucher number one, two, three, five, six, right? I, create a part, I, I created a full payment. Okay, now it's on a paid, it's totally paid now. And then the same with sales, you see your payment deducted from the bill. You can go to the payment transaction by, by clicking the amount paid. You would have the payment transaction here. The same thing you can also do um, in the options, you can attach and then you can send remittance. What is send remittance? Send remittance meaning instead of calling your customer, instead of emailing from your personal email that you have paid the supplier bill, what you would do is email from zero by sending this remittance saying, hey supplier, I have made payment to your to this particular bill that you have sent us. So you can do that, email that direct call, that is remittance advice. You can also print the remittance advice here, select the proper template or branding of your remittance advice and this is how it would look like, okay? So technically, you can run this paperless from zero. So this is now the advice saying that, hey, supplier, this is my invoice. This is the invoice number. This is the reference. Maybe you would want to include in your payment reference the check number. You can also do that. No? So then they would know what check that you, you were paying to them. Okay, so that is how it would be recording the payment. Okay, so your accounts payable would now be zero here, it's fully paid. Now, if you run your profit and loss, it would be the same because it's a balance sheet transaction. Um, nothing in your tax because again, it's a balance sheet transaction. But if you update your balance sheet here, you would realize that your PT cash is recorded, but we have no money for PT cash, okay? But there's no more accounts payable, your current is, is updated. And this 89,600, is actually matching in your PNL going forward. Okay. Now, very quickly, we will have to do purchase order. So, purchase order is very simple. You can either copy an existing bill and convert it to a purchase order or create a purchase order from scratch. 
Um, this is another. Okay, people are maybe they log, log out and come back. And then another supplier. You put the delivery date, maybe at the end of the month. You can put reference here. You select the template if you'd want. And then your attachment if you like also. And then would say, I would want to buy a laptop. One piece, the amount of this is 25,000. Okay, the account of this is a fixed asset account. So I would use computer equipment. I'm entering this now to make a preparation when we do a fixed asset management late next week. Then it's if this is branch one and or this department two. You can put all your text if you want here, put the telephone number, but the basic default information is already saved in this PO. What you can do is save this as draft like you did in code. You save this in draft or if, if you want, Save it as draft. So what would happen here? Someone would approve the PO first before sending it to the supplier, right? Not the other way around. So you can approve the PO. Unlike in code, the customer must approve first before you got to accept the code. In PO, internally you have to approve it before you send it out to your supplier. So here is the case of approve. Now, once an approved, the next step would be to ask you whether you want to send it to your supplier. You can send it by printing it separately as a bill, uh, a PDF, sorry, and then, or you can send it directly to your supplier, right? With this default text of email set, uh, email default text. Then you can also do other things. You can edit and delete that if you'd want. Now, assuming your supplier approves your PO, the next thing would be to wait so that your customer now either fulfills his service or deliver the goods is the case maybe so in the laptop maybe you receive the goods the same day so what would happen that supplier will also issue you a bill or a supplier bill now because you you received the bill sourced from a po you would want to create a bill that is linked to the po how do you do that we have to mark this as bill okay when you mark this as bill you have to take copy a purchase to that you can create a draft bill why do you want to do this so that you do not need to re-enter the same data in your po to the draft okay so i do that what would happen a draft bill will be created okay if i don't want to do anything i just approve it but take note okay i'll just approve this now but take note see there is a reference of the po you would know that this PO is coming from this bill. I'm uh, sorry, this bill is coming from this PO. And then if this PO has, did we issue a bill? Just look down below. You just click here and then it will bring you to the bill that is being approved. So then everything is updated again, even in your sales tax is also updated. So then two lines also updated in your system. Your balance sheet is also updating, showing your payables account. Now, the final step that I would show you now is the repeating. The repeating of the invoice is almost the same thing how we do a repeating in the sales invoice. We just simply select a particular bill that is already in your zero or create fresh from your zero, no? A repeating bill. Now, when do you use repeating bill? Now, I will tell you why and why this is very important when you're using zero. Because in many cases as an accountant, may, we may want to record a provision or an accrual, right? So meaning maybe we have a prepaid expense. It's a prepaid rent and you would want to amortize that in several months. What would you do? What you do is to create a bill in zero and then record a prepaid expense as an asset. That's one thing. And then maybe you can create a repeating bill for that, but we do not advise that, but instead we create a manual journal. Another example would be maybe you would want to make sure that you have put in a temporary entry for your telephone expenses, for your electric expenses, for your water expenses, okay, for your cleaning expenses while waiting for the invoice. And in order for you, you have a complete financial information of your PNL, you'd want to put that as a provision. And then the best way to do that is to create a bill. And then once the bill will come in and the, uh, once the bill from the supplier comes in and then you have recorded the bill, you just simply edit the repeated bill. 
So this is true for utilities, you can use this. So how would I would do that? I can just simply do a repeat here. And then the same thing what I did with the sales invoice, like the date, the month, options, save and approve. What is missing here is approve and send. Why? Because we do not send the bill to our supplier. It's the supplier who's sending us the bill. Okay? So normally it's approved and then you save it. Automatically the system generates a repeating invoices for you every month, especially for utilities. Now, here's another question. Why can we send a statement of account from, uh, from zero in the dashboard uh, the same way we're sending a statement of account to customer. The answer is no. Why? Because you do not send statement of account to your supplier. It is your supplier who's sending you a statement of account. But as the case may be for reconciliation purposes, you can just simply run a contact, you know, run the ledger of the contact and look at what are the transactions for that particular supplier. So let's say I would do a sample post sample customer brings me to the dashboard of that sample customer and then i would be able to see here by clicking this one recent bit i would be able to see all the transaction and i have and then i would just send this by excel and then excel i send this to my supplier that's how you do it for the supplier in case they would want for confirmation or reconciliation purposes